Good sometime today. <laughs> Who knows when this video is going to get up? This one's going to take a while. Uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning, so I figured I'd start here with this one. But I wanted to show you something because I'm betting a lot of you guys have the same problem as me. You have this. You have harvest coming in like crazy, like trombosino squash or zucchini or whatever kind of squash you're growing, or maybe peppers or maybe yellow squash or maybe tomatoes. I'm betting y'all have a kitchen table that looks kind of like mine. And that was just this morning's harvest. So the biggest conundrum we all get this time of year as we're spending time in the kitchen trying to do something with everything is what do I do with my harvest? Now for me, I've already made 70 quarts of chili. I've already made 70 quarts of stuffed peppers. I've already made 70 quarts of salsa. And guess what? I've still got tomatoes coming in and the peppers are going nuts. And yeah, I'll probably wind up making more of all of that. But like everybody else, I want some variety in my meals, whether it's for an SHTF event or whether it's maybe, gee, it's a busy day. It's seven o'clock at night. We need dinner and I haven't even started anything and I don't feel like eating at nine. Okay. The other big question we get this time of year is what do I do with all this squash? Okay. And over the last couple of years, I showed you how to make a squash soup. Uh, I showed you how to make calvacita as a soup. Uh, I showed you zucchini bread, you know, so different ideas on what to do. So today, what I'm going to show you is something where I can use everything I've got here, added in some onions. Yes, I've already used all the onions I grew and I grew a boatload of onions, but they all went into chili. They all went into salsa, stuffed peppers, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So now I've got a bag of regular store-bought onions because I needed them. I need some garlic. Now you can use fresh garlic. I'm going to use pickled garlic. Reason? It puts an added zing into this, okay? And then you need some sort of beans, okay? So I'm going to use Great Northern Beans. I love white beans. You could use, I'm still growing mine, your white beans that you're growing yourself, okay? Mine have it all come in. This will probably be my seed stock for next year, and I'm going to grow a boatload of beans next year, and not so much of the other stuff, because when I'm done with all of this, I will have probably a couple of years worth of this soup to, to go, so I won't need to grow maybe zucchini next year or something. Don't know. But this is one of the things about when you're planning your garden each year is to look at, okay, what do I still have put away so I don't need to grow it this year. I mean, case in point, me and my green beans. I mean, I've still got some 40 quarts of green beans in my pantry. I didn't grow green beans. I grew some for seed. That was it. Okay. But I didn't grow green beans for storage this year. Maybe next year I don't have to grow squash, which opens up my garden space for something else that I, I want to grow. So I have diversity. And again, diversity in anything is what you're looking for. So let's take a look at this. And actually, this is time consuming because there's a lot of cutting, okay, obviously, but maybe not as much as you think. This is actually going to be an easier soup to make than most people think. If you're a vegetarian or vegan or something like that, there ain't no meat in this, okay? So this is completely a vegan vegetarian soup. And I'm betting that most, if not all of you, grew some sort of squash, some sort of pepper, and tomatoes. So, you know, if you've got the beans, great. You can use any, you want to use red beans, you like red beans better than white beans, go for it. Okay. If you got to buy onions, you got to buy garlic, so be it. But at least you can process the rest of the stuff. Most of this stuff is pretty easy. It's dump and go. Some of it is just chopping it up, i.e. the peppers or the onions. That's it. Okay. The rest of it is cleaning it and throwing it through a blender. Okay. That's it. So what we want to do, and I'm going to show you this as we go, is first off, we're going to work on what we've got to blend because that's going to be our soup base. 
So through the magic of time, I'm not going to make you watch me peel a squash, but what you want to take is one of your squash, and many, okay? You're actually going to go three to one, your green squash to your yellow squash, okay? But you're basically going to clean it. I'm just going to cut this out. And if there's any seeds in it, depending on the squash, I like to pick mine when they're younger, though some of them get away from me and I don't have the choice, okay? But all I'm going to do is chop this up into pieces that I can throw in a blender, okay? That's it. My green squash, my zucchini, whatever green squash you're using. And then, of course, I'm also going to use yellow squash, okay? Different flavors. Woo! Don't stab myself with a knife. Tomatoes, okay? Again, same thing. We're just going to skin and all, seeds and all, everything. I'm just going to dice them up, throw them in a bowl. That's it, okay? Because all this stuff is going to go through a blender. Easy. So, let me get all that made. God knows how long it's going to take me to peel all these squash. Uh, and then I'll be back to show you what's next. Okay, so I changed up. I figured rather than do everything and go through it, I figured I'd just do one batch and show you. So, the ratio that you want to use for squash, tomatoes, and everything like that to make this, okay, is three average size squash, or the equivalent thereof. I had one, av one average size, one big one, okay, so those two made one. One average size yellow squash, uh, and then one large tomato, or two medium tomatoes, whatever it would be. Put them in a blender, put them in a food processor, whatever it would be. You'll get about two quarts out of that, okay? You're going to have to add a little bit of water. That's fine. You're going to need that. This is a soup after all, okay? And there's water in there, so that's what we're looking for. So after we do that part, the next thing we're going to do is add our chunked vegetables. So what we have are two average size green peppers, split and cleaned, okay? A half of an onion, medium size onion, you can See the size of the onion, it's not huge, okay? And two cloves of garlic. So all we're gonna do, garlic's easy, because all you're gonna do is mince that up a little bit, you know, depending on how big of chunks of garlic you like in soup, but you're looking for added flavor out of that. Okay, easy enough, all right? And we're gonna take our onion, again, depending on how chunky you want it, you want, you want these pieces to be, I don't want to say substantial, but you don't want them to disappear in the soup, okay? And the same with your peppers. Peppers are always so much fun to cut. And you want them to be decent size, you know, so it, it's a soup. You're, you're not making a stew or anything. It'll be a thick soup, but all right, so we're going to take all this and we're gonna add it to the bowl. So let me chop the rest of my peppers and I'll be right back. All right, so far so easy, right? This is not exactly difficult, but it's a good way to get rid of zucchini. So last thing we need to add, well, not the last thing, but next thing we need to add is our beans, okay? Wanna add the beans, juice and all, okay? Again, we want some sort of one can of beans for this portion and Stir everything together, right? That way we got basically a complete meal. We have proteins, we have vitamins, we have vegetables, we have everything we need. All the stuff in there. Now, doesn't that look good? Add some to taste, of course. Salt. I don't add a terrible amount of it. Mrs. P usually adds hers. Adds it to it after we cook, but I watch blood pressure. Uh, and then, of course, add some ground pepper to it all. And trust me, you're going to want to add salt and pepper because you need to bring out the flavors in the zucchini and everything like that. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. So, mix all that together. And now, at least that batch 
is ready to go into a stew pot. What we need to do with this one is however much you're gonna make. If this is it, put it in a little three quart Dutch oven or whatever it is. You can literally heat that up and have it for dinner. You're done, okay? If you wanna can it, where we are going with this now is make everything, put it all in a big stew pot, whatever you need. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do probably five to 10 gallons of this today. Uh, but you are going to simmer that, bring it to a boil, and then let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Okay, you want all these flavors to melt. In regards to canning it, I'm going to say this disclaimer right now, if you want to do it. There are no approved recipes for canning zucchini in the Ball Blue, Bro Blah, 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 ball blue Book. I know people are going to say, you can't can zucchini. All right. Well, I showed you how to make zucchini soup last year. I showed you how to make calvacita two years ago. Uh, yeah, you can. It's just the Ball Blue Book doesn't have any approved recipes. The FDA doesn't say, oh, gee, you can do this. Okay. They also don't say you can can rice. But, again, you've seen my videos on making stuffed peppers. And we do it. Okay. If you're afraid of canning the zucchini, I get it. No problem. Just figure out a way to store your zucchini. If you want to shred it all and freeze it and make this soup, you know, in the winter, okay, that'll work. You might have, you know, might have a little hard time finding tr fresh tomatoes or fresh peppers or anything like that. But you can still do this out of the frozen vegetables. If you want to can your stewed tomatoes and do it that way. You want to freeze peppers, everything, you can do that, okay? Not a problem. But if you're looking to get it as fresh as possible and do it all at once, I've done this many times. This works fine. I'm still alive, so way to go. But you'll can this for 75 minutes for quarts and for 60 minutes for pints if you want to do that. But I'm telling you, with the squash you got, I'm betting you're all going to do this in quarts. So... Wanted to share another recipe with you, uh, just something that's very simple and can get rid of a lot of produce in the garden fast and put it up. Because come winter time, you're going to want the taste of tomatoes and peppers and squash outside of stuffed peppers and salsa and chili and all those other things that I've made. I know something different is always good. And when wintertime rolls around and it's cold outside, yes, it gets cold in Tennessee too, okay? A bowl of soup is a nice dinner with a piece of bread. And this one, you can probably do with pretty much everything out of your garden. Very little cost at all. We need to have recipes for the day that there ain't no store. And like I said, this is one that go back years and years and years and years when, you know, the only time you ate meat was on Sunday, the rest of the time you ate vegetables all week, there you go. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you tonight. Pinball out.